How's it going guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle and today we're going to be talking about Curtains from 1983. This is directed by Richard Kupkla. Richard Kupkla, not Jonathan Stryker. I should bring this up. Um, in the opening credits of the movie they do kind of this joke. There's a director character in the movie, Jonathan Stryker, and in the opening credits, they credit him and not the actual director. It's a good bit of meta humor, but when you're trying to write stuff down and get it right for a review, it can be a little frustrating. Um, but anyway, uh, directed by Richard Kupkla and stars John Vernon, Samantha Edgar, and Linda Thornston. Um, this is kind of a deeper cut 80s slasher. I really wanted to watch another 80s slasher movie. It had been a little bit of time since my last one, and I I really do love slashers. And I picked this up, um, Curtains, one I had been looking for for a bit, but I hadn't been able to find the solo release um, in any store that I went to, and I saw it was included on this four-pack. Obviously, not the best quality when you go for the four-pack version, but I was still glad to, uh, to see it. Just a, a little grainier than I would have preferred. Uh, but anyway, this is a, a little bit of a cult classic. This is one of those that I feel like if it was just a little bit better, really would have hit that cult classic status. And this is one that has a lot of good themes, a lot of good ideas. Some of the kills are good, and the, the slasher villain herself, uh, herself actually one of the rare female slasher movies, a lot of uh, good stuff going on in this movie, but that being said, just falls a little short. If the rest of the kills were a little better, if they defined their side characters a little more, if it was if it was a little bit better, this movie would have really been a classic. As it stands, it's one of those almost classic movies. It's worth checking out if you can find it, and there's a lot to like in here, but just falls a, a little bit short. Um, but yeah, a deeper cut 80s slasher, a lot to like, just I wish it was that extra, if it was just a little bit better it would have been perfect. Uh, but anyway, this is a movie about six actresses that are going out to an audition. Uh, this guy invites them to his house, the director, to come and do an extended audition and find out which, six, which of them out of the six gets this very coveted role. And, of course, there's lots of backstabbing. It talks about how, you know, they push for greatness in the craft. They push to be a better actor. But how quickly pushing someone towards greatness can easily become abuse. And we've seen these themes before. I mean, Black Swan came out later. You know, it's a theme that we're used to a lot nowadays. And this is one of the early examples of it. You know, seeing the acting community, put, uh, having the people in charge push people way too hard uh, to the point of definitely becoming abuse, but also seeing people in power take advantage of that power in ways that sadly Hollywood definitely did in real life and probably still continues to do, and this horror movie definitely points that out. So there's a lot of really good dark themes, the dark side of acting in here, that's really good. Also, this masked killer, this is the old hag mask. It's an old lady with all this red hair. Uh, a lot of you guys have probably seen her around, but not necessarily knew what movie she came from. A really good slasher character. She sometimes carries this creepy doll with her too, so that's always fun to have a creepy doll. And there's some really good kills, like the ice skating sequence, what you'll definitely, if you look up this movie, you look up Curtains in YouTube, one of the first results will be Curtains ice skating sequence, and it's really famous, you know, and there is some good stuff there. The uh, climax to this movie has a prop room sequence. The prop room sequence is great. You're doing a movie-themed horror movie. You gotta do the prop room sequence and the girl's wandering around not knowing what's up and there's a point where she thinks she found an exit door but it's just part of the set leaned up against the wall so when she opens it there's a brick wall behind it and you don't really know what's real in a prop room so that's a fun scene 
There's even a scene later where someone opens up a toilet and there's a severed head in it. So there is some really good, fun kill stuff, and that's what slashes are about. But there's also some really lame kills in this movie too, which is kind of strange that you get something as cool as the ice skating sequence and as cool as the prop room sequence, but then you get kind of lame kills, you know? There's one kill where the killer puts the hand over someone's mouth, and that's just kind of so-so, and especially because a sequence relatively before this, the killer did something much more elaborate, and then it ended with a hand on the mouth and more, so it's kind of a repeat and not near as much. Some guy randomly just wanders off and you see him stabbed later, and that's kind of lame. And there's this really cool sequence where someone's in the car driving and there's this whole thing with a creepy doll. It was a really cool sequence, and then it's revealed to be a dream, but then the character's killed off later just with a regular old stabbing. It's like, it would have been so much cooler if the dream sequence was the real kill, but no, we're going to wake up, it was all a dream, and replace it with a so-so stabbing kill? So yeah, this movie has really good kills, and then a lot of really so-so kills. There's also another thing with this movie, the, the side characters. You get to know the main girl, and you get to know like one or two of the other girls, um, especially like the actress, uh, the, the main one that didn't get the part, we'll cover her in a bit. So you get to know some of the girls, but then like about half the girls you don't really know too well. And a really frustrating thing, they're all trying out for the same part, so they all look relatively similar. They're young women of about the same height and build, and they all have brown hair. So you don't necessarily know which one's which. It's really easy to get them confused, especially when they're in the dark. And this is a horror movie. The girls are going to be in the dark a lot or when you see just the back of their head, and I really wish I get the concept that they're supposed to all look the same because they're all trying to be Audra, but at the same time, it makes it super confusing, and it makes it hard to learn these characters, so that, that was definitely frustrating. And then there's a few things later on, you know, like with the editing and stuff, where you kind of lose track of who's where and what's going on, and there's this sequence that I absolutely don't get where someone falls out of a window and the glass breaks, they shoot out of the window on the second story and then somehow curve back in and crash back into the house on the first story. Like if someone flies out the window, they would go away from the house. How did they curve back in and crash back into the house one story down? Maybe they hit a curtain and used it as a rope. I don't know. This is just a weird scene. Uh, but anyway, yeah, a few gripes, and I, I don't want to gripe too hard. This movie, like I said, some really good slasher elements and a lot more theme than most slashers have. I really do like that. But then there's elements that really don't work. So this movie has a lot to like about it, and then a lot that just kind of doesn't work. I would actually say this is a pretty good candidate for a remake. This one is a standalone. No sequels and it hasn't been remade yet. And I think a studio like A24 that really works with themes, they could really do a good remake. And, you know, a lot of people bash on remakes unnecessarily. There are cases, and I think this is one of them, where if we just analyzed it, found the flaws, corrected them, and really pushed it just a little farther, this could have a really awesome remake, and I would totally love to see that. Uh, but anyway, as it stands, it's good enough, but not great. Worth checking out if you find it and you're an 80s slasher fan. Uh, without further ado, let's analyze the plot a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and dive right in. I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, but I do want to say my piece on a few plot points and make sure you guys have a basic understanding as to what the story is about. We open up with an actress and a director. The director's looking down at the actress on the stage. She's doing a scene about how she walks in on her lover having an affair and shoots him. And, the, and she fires the gun, and the director says, I don't believe it. 
and then it cuts to a little while later, and this actress is in an insane asylum. She's gone crazy, and the director shows up to talk to her. She seems better, and then pulls out a knife and almost stabs him. Now, of course, that gets her sent right back in, but when all the orderlies go away, the director and the actress talk in private, and it turns out she didn't actually go insane. The character of Audra goes insane, so she wanted to research the character by pretending to go insane herself and see what it's like. And there's a fun sequence where some of the inmates at this asylum are watching the TV and see her on it, and they all start to go, well, what? And they, they think it's funny. Um, so there is some interesting stuff here, but then the director decides, you know what? I don't think this is working out. I'm going to get someone else and leaves the first actress in the asylum. This really cues you in right off the bat that this is a backstabbing and betrayal world. It's dog eat dog and really not good. Um, he has an audition for six girls to come over to his house. Big mansion surrounded by snow. I gotta love the setting. If you want a good winter atmosphere horror movie, a nice secluded mansion in the middle of the snow, hence the ice skating sequence later. Really, really cool. Good wintry slasher. Uh, but anyway, he invites the girls over, and you get to meet the main girl. I really do like the final girl in this movie. She's a comedian, and you find out about the whole premise because she's doing a stand-up bit, and she goes, yeah, six actresses alone in a house. No way that could go off. And she's actually, you know, pretty funny, but I do like the idea she wants to be a serious actress, but she knows that she's going to this audition and probably not going to be taken seriously. She's just the comedian. But she also wonders, why was I chosen? Out of all these people, why me? And then you get a few other girls, but a lot of them blend together. There's one that was like an older actress, so she's got prestige, but she's starting to worry that she's out of her prime. I remember that one. There's the girl that does the skating, and I think one of them dances or something. But a lot of these other girls just kind of blend together, especially, you know, uh, they all look relatively similar because they're going for the same part. So the other girls are kind of just blended together, you know? Um, but that being said, the big thing happens when the girl get from the beginning, the initial actress, her friend gets her out of the asylum and she crashes the auditions. Obviously, this is going to be one of the prime suspects for the killer because she definitely has motivation. Anyway, the director doesn't kick her out and says, you really want it, you fight for it and they begin to go through the tough acting process, again, turning, trying to hone your craft into abuse. But there's one scene where it's revealed the director actually brought the old hag mask to the house himself, and it's an acting tool. Basically, with the mask on, you can't use facial expressions, and you can't use your natural beauty, and he says, try to convince me with this mask on. So it's actually a really good tool, like they talk about with, like, say, the Mandalorian, how much acting he has to do because he wears the helmet and he has to sell his performance when he can't see his face. It's actually a legitimate acting tool and a good technique. And I do like the idea that it helps it serve as more of a metaphor for the obsession, you know, and how they kind of are turning into the old hag by being pressured into all this stuff. Uh, but anyway, there's that. There's, of course, the director abusing his power and really turning into a bad guy, you know. The slasher's obviously the main bad guy. The director's also a bad guy, though. Um, but, of course, they start getting picked off one by one, and there's some good kill sequences, and like I covered earlier, there's some not as good kill sequences, but people going one by one in a big haunted house, I really do love this concept, even if the execution isn't perfect, and you start to wonder who's where, and 
who all the other characters are. I do wish the characters were more different, more fleshed out, and all the kills were as good as the ice skating sequence. But as it stands, there is a fair bit to like. I really do like the killer, and I like it when it's good. It's just not all the slasher stuff is good, and not all the side characters are good. If you did a remake, and you had those themes, those deep, dark, you know, Black Swan-esque themes, keep those around, maybe even push them. But when you do a remake, I would say define the other girls' characters more, and make you understand them, and also try to have all the deaths as iconic as that ice skating sequence. But like a hand just covering over a mouth, or just finding a guy stabbed that just wandered off into the woods, those aren't the best, and you only have so many people at this house. But overall, what works really does work, and what doesn't work really doesn't work. It's good enough, if you're a slasher fan, if you're an 80s horror fan, it's worth checking out, especially just to know what the killer with the old hag mask is all about. But that being said, it definitely could be better. And I feel this is one of those movies that's just right on the cusp of being a classic. So I really do hope someone remakes this someday. Because it's good, but not great. But it's almost there. Almost, you know? Uh, but anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. If you want to see more, you can click there and see more. This should be my slasher movies playlist. I've talked about a lot of slasher movies, and I definitely will talk about more. But if you want to see me talk about early proto-slashers like uh, Bay of Blood or Alice Sweet Alice, the big ones from the 80s like Halloween and Friday the 13th, and even some newer ones. I recently talked about the new Scream movie, so you can find them in there. It's a really long playlist. I talked about a ton of slashers. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Slasher playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.